social media during the pandemic, how have you landed on it in terms of the pros, cons? How has that, if it has drastically changed how you feel about your relationship with your audience in the world? And thank you, because the Sundays, I can't tell you what they did for us. <laughs> really, really yeah. In the center of our small English market town in Middle England, when COVID kicked in, the fear was palpable. You could feel it. And was it on a Thursday evening, David, when everyone came out at uh, yes, 6 o'clock? Yes, for the NHS. Was it, yes, it, it was Thursday evening. Yes. That what would happen, the, the NHS, the National Health Service, which was under terrible pressure, um, Toya's sister, uh, has been a, a player, an executive in the National Health Service, so within the family we're well aware of the details. But the neighbours all down the street in our town would come out at six o'clock and clap to acknowledge those serving the community in a very dangerous field. And our neighbours were all down the street and around the square. And that's as close as we got to them for weeks. And on occasion at six o'clock, an ambulance would come by. And we'd cheer even more. <laughs> now, so lockdown went in, and for me this was an opportunity to look inward and reflect on points of interest, recapitulate a few decades on the road, catch up with my academic music reading, which was a treat. So on the inside in my study, if you looked in through the door and saw what was going on, it would be this little old man, very much like I am at the moment, <laughs> with my inner world oozing riches. However, that's how I felt. My wife looked in and she saw this old goat <laughs> who was becoming increasingly introverted, useless. <laughs> and my wife decided I'd best get him into action before he croaks on me. <laughs> now, my wife has always been very insistent. The performer has the responsibility to perform and in times of considerable public distress, where lots and lots of little ordinary people are stuck in their one-room apartments in tower blocks and they cannot leave. I mean, we have a garden we can go down and come back. It, it, this is terrifying. So... Uh, my wife kicked things going, and I'm not sure exactly the words she took, but she did buy a tutu for me. <laughs> and we did go down to the end of the garden on the river's edge, and I put on a tutu, and we cranked up Swan Lake, and we danced to Swan Lake. <laughs> there were, may I say, some King Crimson fans in Italy, who were outraged. <laughs> this is our Fripp, or as they might say, Freep, Freep! Freep! And he seemed to be kicking against received opinion, and it moved on from there. To begin with, it was very stressful for me. It was very stressful for me because I was learning lots of classic E riffs in a C pentatonic tuning. <laughs> And that was very, very complex. And to begin with, we would, I would learn and film on the morning of the Sunday. So I'd have to learn it, film it, and then put it up. And increasingly, it, no, it needed a little more time and effort than this. But in terms of performance, it remains exactly the same. We film it in our kitchen, and we film it on Toya's iPhone. I have a guitar and a little amplifier there. The sound is appalling. <laughs> um, but my wife's ideas are stunning and it's all down to my wife who continues to insist look 
there are people out there who need us to lift their spirits. And some of the message, messages we've got are heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And we had one a couple of weeks ago, and my wife said, if this person is the only reason we've done Sunday lunches, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. 